You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. this meeting of the Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission to order. I have 7.02 p.m. It is Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. Uh, introduce members of the commission and staff. Uh, Joe Chadwick. Joe, are you here? Joe Chadwick is present. Thank you, Joe. Fred Russo. Fred, are you here? Fred Russo, present. Thank you, Fred. Joe Vayuso. Joe? Joe is muted right now. He's still muted. I just asked him to unmute. Should be all right now. There he is. Hey, no. yeah. Okay, Joe, Joe just you're present. Great. Why are you so present? Great, thank you. And Massimo, Massimo Liguri, you're here. Massimo Liguri is here. Yes. Great. And I'm Chuck Anders chair. Uh, our staff this evening is Harry Smith, our town planner. Harry, you here? I am here. And our assistant planner, Evan Brining. Evan, are you here? I'm here. And our clerk recording secretary is Michelle Martin, uh, who is uh, lurking in the background. With that, um, I'll ask uh, our secretary, Fred oh. Russo, to read the notice of public hearing. Uh, can I interrupt for one second? We also have with us Jane Ellis, um, who maybe can chat with a little later, who is our new zoning enforcement officer. Great. Jane Ellis. Jane, thank you for attending. Are you here, Jane? Maybe you may, I'll make her, hang on a second, co-host. All right. Yes, I am. Nice to meet everybody. Thank you, Jane. With that, uh, with that uh, Fred, can you read the notice of public hearing? I will. Legal notice to Town of Brantford. The Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Brantford Connected hereby gives notice of public hearings to be held on Thursday, February 2nd, 2023 at 8 p.m. by remote technology to consider the applications listed below. Information regarding how to participate in the public hearings will be provided on the uh, on the commission's meeting agenda that we posted on the town's website at least 24 hours prior to the meeting. One, application number 22-11.2 dash 11 law rear subdivision located at 175 cherry hill road bc investment properties llc here bruno chicone applicant and owner number two application number 22-11.3 special exception for an interior rear lot section 6.11 lot number five located at 175 cherry hill road BC Investment Properties, LLC, Carol Bruno Ciccone, applicant and owner. Number three, application number 22-11.4, special exception for an interior rear lot, section 6.11, lot number two, located at 175 Cherry Hill Road, BC Investment Properties, LLC, Carol Bruno Ciccone, applicant and owner. Number four, Application number 23-1.5, special exception for grading, section 6.8, low. Cherry Hill Road, BC Investment Ball, point four. Special exception for an accessory apartment located at 12 Whiting Farm Road, Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph uh, Keeney, uh, applicant and owner. 
number six, application number 22-12.5. Special exception for an oversized accessory structure located at 12 Whiting Farm Road, Joseph Bukini, applicant and owner. Uh, applicant num uh, number seven, application 22-12.6. Special, special exception for an accessory apartment located at 40 Pent Road. Kevin J. and Robin J. Next structure, applicants and owner. Number eight, application number 23-1.1, special exception, section 6.8, Pont Road, uh, Pleasant Point Road. Richard Hellman. And Susan Levy, applicants and owner. Number nine, application number 23-1.2. Special exceptions for an accessory apartment located at 22 Collins Drive, Genewood, applicant and owner. Number 10, application number 23-1.3. Special exceptions for an accessory apartment located at 24 Standard Avenue, Edward Esborn, applicant and owner. Number 11, application number 23-1.4. Special exception for accessory apartment located at 6 Old Boston Road. Peter and Patricia Brogel, applicants and owner. And last, number 12, application number 22-12.7. Special exception for a two-family house located at 650 Main Street. Silver Line Development, LLC. Care Carl, Carl Mueller, uh, applicant and owner. At said hearings, all persons will have the right to be heard. Copies are on file in the Planning and Zoning Commissioner's Office, Connecticut, 0605. Written communications may be sent to the above address or to Planning and Zoning at Granford-CT.gov. Granford Planning and Zoning Commission, C. Andres, Chairperson. <clears throat> Chuck Andres here. Thank you, Fred. We'll follow our normal format for public hearings, and that is that the applicant goes first, makes its presentation. If you need assistance with screen sharing or anything, just give a shout. And I uh, want to make sure Harry or Evan could enable that. After the applicant makes his presentation, we turn it over to commission members and staff. We'll hear a summary of a staff report and open up for questions by the commission members, questions and comments. After that, then we'll have the public portion. And uh, I'll ask Evan to review with you the process for participating in this uh, remote public hearing. Um, Evan will review that with you. And then after that, we, uh, we, have to, we, we may or may not continue the public hearing, but if we don't, we allow the applicant to respond to public comment. And uh, we may or may not, as I said, close the public hearing depending on how it goes. And we may or may not vote on it. It's not unusual for some applications to have uh, public hearing extend over several days. And with that, Evan, can you uh, review with us the process for the public to participate in the public hearing when the at the appropriate times uh sure if you'd like to speak uh, there's down at the bottom of your screen um there's a reactions button and once uh, uh the chair asks for any public participation you can press this button uh it gives you a few options and please select raise your hand so we know that you'd like to participate uh, you can also type your comments into the chat feature um and if you are calling in you can press star nine to raise your hand. And we ask that everybody please state their name at the beginning of their comment or question. <clears throat> Chuck Anders Chair, thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Evan. With respect to the chat fe feature though, we, I, th that's often difficult if, to make it part of the record. Uh, so we, we would hope, and, and sometimes chatting can go on while people are speaking. So the, the hope is that you just use chat you know, in the event you're not recognized or something rather than for substantive comments. With that, then we'll move to our public hearing items. And the first item is, uh, is just for the record on our agenda is 94 East Main Street LLC. And that was a special exception in coastal site plan for the construction of three two family dwelling units. Uh, that application has been withdrawn. So if you are here on that, that application is withdrawn, that application is not going forward. And so that was item number one for 94 East Main Street. The next items are actually items two through five are on our agenda. 
That is uh, the, the same applicant, which is BC Investment Properties, LLC, care of Bruno Sassoni, applicant and owner. And this uh, concerns, uh, and the, the location is 175 Cherry Hill Road. This concerns the 11 lot re-subdivision, and as well as a special exception for uh, two interior lots, two special exception ap applications for those, and a special exception for grading. Is the uh, applicant ready to proceed with that? Uh, hi, my name is Zach Georgina with Giuliano Associates. I'm the project engineer for this, so I will be doing the presentation. Uh, and yeah, I am ready to proceed. If I could have screen sharing capabilities, that would be fantastic. Excellent. Uh, Harry Smith, Town Planner. Uh, Zach, you um, do have screen sharing, so go right ahead. Awesome. Always like to ask first. Nope, nope, that's fine. All right. And, and just for the record, are you a PE at this point, or are you still... Um... I'm an EIT at this point. Okay, engineer training. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, uh, I just want to make sure everyone can see my screen. We should be looking at uh, what is sheet one of the drawing set after the uh, title sheet. I'm just, um, so you understand, sorry, Harry Smith again, town planner. Mm -hmm. uh, Zach, the hard copies didn't get to our office until after our packets were sealed and, and had postage on them. So we had to send them off. Um, it just missed the boat basically. So they have not seen them. I have uh, sent around Dropbox link, but I don't know if anybody's been able to, you know, access that yet. So just don't assume everyone's seen it is the comment. Thanks. Uh, understood. I just want to make sure everyone can see my screen currently, though. I, I have had issues yes. with that in the past. Okay, fantastic. Yep. Awesome. Okay, uh, so for uh, those of you who have been on this commission for uh, a year or more, this should look initially familiar um, as we were here previously, but let's just go through some quick history of the, of the property. Uh, 175 Cherry Hill Road uh, is a parcel that for the last 20 years has been essentially a derelict farm. It was previously used for a farming operation way back in the day. Uh, and while it has been owned and the fields have been maintained in terms of being trimmed, uh, it has been unoccupied for the better part of 20 years at this point, if not more. Um, this parcel was intended to be a later uh, addition to the Autumn Ridge subdivision, uh, which currently abuts it to the, uh, the Northeast, uh, as well as uh, the southeast and then abuts regular Cherry, Cherry Hill and other um, dwellings to the south. To the west of this property are two fairly large uh, tracts of regional water authority land. And for the most part, this site has, as I said, been farmland. Uh, slowly, the brush and uh, woods have been encroaching onto it as it has been minimally, minimally maintained, but still maintained. Uh, it features some steep slopes uh, to the west and is currently uh, accessed by a dirt driveway in off the dead end of where Cherry Hill currently terminates. Uh, it does have, as part of the Autumn Ridge um, subdivision, town right-of-way access off of Autumn Ridge Road itself uh, to the northeast, which always, again, not sure how my mouse shows up, but we we're talking... This is the town right of way on Autumn Ridge Road that was uh, included as part of the original Autumn Ridge subdivision and Cherry Hill is located over in this region. Uh, the, par the current parcel is about 12.4 acres plus or minus. There's always some rounding air issues there, but we're looking at 12.4 acres. It is in a R4 residential zone. And uh, as was said in the original description, we are looking to subdivide this lot into 11 lots featuring two rear lots uh, and some open space requirements. So I, I do understand that not, the most recent revision has not been uh, received by everyone, but, let, but let's just go through that real quick. Uh, most of the changes are fairly minor, so this still should look fairly familiar with what you have in front of you. All right, uh, so what we have here is our uh, re-subdivision map. Uh, what you see shaded in purple that was not previously on uh, your maps is the steep locations of steep slopes currently on the site. Uh, those will be subtracted out of any lot areas uh, and are informationally speaking uh, where we're primarily going to be using 
open space area to offer to the regional water authority. Uh, we have reached out to them. Uh, John Triana, their uh, real estate coordinator, has expressed a uh, desire to acquire the land uh, long term that we are offering to them uh, that will be <laughs> locked into the uh, open space requirement. Uh, as well as, and this is from uh, comments that you may or may not have received, we got them last night uh, from our Friday submitted revision, um, as well as this region of lot five, which we are going to be putting a easement on, would be addressed later with the town comments, but since we're here, figured I'd touch on it. Um, as you can see, our lots we are proposing essentially to take Cherry Hill Road, uh, which currently terminates just before our property, and continue that up through the center of our subdivision, connect that up to Autumn Ridge Road to allow for traffic circulation um, and meet this commission's uh, original feedback from our year ago, where it was expressed that the proposed cul-de-sac design was less than optimal and the through road was uh, the goal here. Uh, to this point, the layout of most of these lots are fairly similar in their general um, geography. Uh, some of them have shifted in order to make grades work. Uh, we are still keeping two rear lots, uh, which are the other two applications. Those will, if I zoom in here a little bit, are lo lots two and lots five uh, that are, are located on the, uh, the west side of what we are proposing to uh, have as Cherry Hill Roads extension. All right, continuing on from here. Uh, going into more of the development plan, getting into some of the more nitty gritty details here. Uh, we are looking when we connect up here. Uh, so, sorry about that. Come on, computer. There we go. Zoom in. There we go. Uh, we are proposing in here uh, for these rear access lots, um, fa fairly shallow driveways. We are making sure that we are not extending um, beyond the, help me if you will on this one, Harry, what is our distance on driveways? I believe it's 250. Uh, 230, I believe. T 230. We are well, uh, well beneath that. I believe we are in the 140 range, but below that uh, maximum cutoff distance. Uh, and we are trying to keep the rear dwellings centered within their setbacks to not try encroach at all and provide maximum privacy um, with what we are proposing for approximate locations. Uh, these plans also show approximate grading uh, to show feasibility of this. Uh, these individual lots when sold off will be individually uh, developed and have site plans submitted as we are not sure what the final house uh, configuration and designs will be. Uh, those obviously will be to the purchaser to get an architect and figure out exactly what they're wanting to build here, uh, as well as driveway configurations. These are more along the lines of feasibil uh, feasibility for the site. Continuing on the east side here. Uh, likewise, this will be the lower side of the road coming down through here. Again, feasibility of these lots. And you can see here in the south corner, uh, southwest corner is the proposed detention basin, uh, which will be handling the stormwater runoff from not just Cherry Hill Road, but also the dwellings on site, allowing for stormwater uh, maintenance and control. Uh, Nitty gritty details, we can come here if there are specific questions, but this is stormwater analysis. We can essentially skip this for conversation pieces right now. Uh, likewise, we have just real quick here, this is the road profile showing not just the curve of the road, it also shows existing grade along that uh, with where our cuts and fills will be. You will notice that most of the road is in cut. That is to help handle the, I believe it's about 100 feet of elevation across the site difference. Um, also, you can see our proposed utility layouts in here with inverts. Again, this is fairly um, in detail, uh, but engineering has had this and this remains unchanged from the original submission. Uh, continuing in here, we have a bit more detail on the basin itself. We are planning to have this um, fed through a um, stormwater, a stormwater 
separator system, uh, specifically at Contec. Uh, essentially, these are designed so water comes in, any trash, filth, silts, fine materials, dirt from the road get filtered out so they don't end up in the basin, uh, meaning that these, uh, when accompanied with the stormwater maintenance um, documents provided, if these are regularly maintained, the basin itself should be fairly self-sustaining long-term. All right, continuing through here. Uh, we've got the street, our uh, street tree plan. We are proposing to maintain the, uh, the regulation requirement of planting fresh new trees every 50 feet. Uh, originally, we had looked at maintaining uh, a unified um, planting. This is not the most common, but it does allow for an ease of replant. It also allows for minimal fall cleanups, which as my personal neighborhood has three oaks, all the oaks drop their leaves at the same time, it makes for a real easy fall cleanup. But that was part of the mentality when thinking and picking our uh, tree selections. All right, uh, continuing on here, come on. Uh, here we have our storm, essentially our stormwater um, watershed mapping. Uh, and you can see currently on the left drawing, this orange region, all sheets towards the RWA property currently. Uh, off to the west, uh, this blue area is currently going off to our south onto Cherry Hill uh, Drive's properties. Uh, we have this gray area that comes back to these detention basins, which were installed as part of the original Rot Autumn Ridge um, subdivision. And this green area down here is also sheeting, but only into this one basin back here. Our proposed revision um, ends up maintaining this back area uh, now in orange, sheeting off to essentially where it currently is to all of its existing zones. The teal area is really the area in question. And these are all being directed into the stormwater detention basin uh, to collect, infiltrate, and prevent uh, increases in peak runoff. The purple area back here on the back side of the basin will sheet down towards Cherry Hill Road. Um, and this last gray area back here will continue um, to sheet towards sheet flow uh, towards the regional water authority properties. These areas back here will also um, become regional water authorities property. So not a huge, huge concern there as well. Uh, all right, I believe we're into oh, one more in detail space here in the stormwater. You can, let's zoom in a hair here. Uh, you can see that we are gonna be using a system of catch basins along the roadway, uh, much like you would see in any existing municipal road collecting water all the way down up to this perpendicular point here where water that's collected will be directed into the basin. Basin will fill, um, retain the water. It's designed currently based on soil conditions that this basin will run dry in 23 hours after the end of the storm. Uh, this is well within the state requirement of 72 hours to run dry for storage. And it is designed to handle up to uh, the 100 year storm. So sizable basin designed to run dry. Uh, and we do have a six foot high perimeter fence uh, proposed around this to uh, deter anyone from coming into this basin as it is a uh, of a sizable depth. Let's see here, continuing on here. Uh, these are just general details. We have town details, uh, guardrail details. Um, we can spend time if there are specific questions on these details. Uh, likewise, pump chambers for the proposed sanitary systems. Uh, and come on, uh, our general soil and erosion control um, measures. Uh, on our current drawings, everything is denoted as silt fence. Our uh, stormwater and erosion control, sorry, our erosion control and sediment details here um, specify more specifically uh, when certain measures are to be implemented, uh, specifically at the toe of slopes and at critical junctions, uh, they are to be reinforced by um, hay bales, essentially staked into the ground behind the silt fence to reinforce it. So if there was to be a major erosion event, you have more than just a silt fence um, catching the materials. All right. Uh, and our one of our last additions here uh, was the requested photometrics plan. And this is gonna be completely new to you guys. I don't believe this was included at all in your last uh, packet. This is based around 
uh, information provided by Town Engineering and Eversource. Essentially, um, we were provided our office at the request of Town Eng from Town Engineering and Eversource the following detail, uh, which shows the pole and head selections that Eversource is installing. Um, we weren't provided anything beyond the basic specs of what the wattage of the uh, light head was, as well as its approximate lumen output. Um, and we were not instructed by Eversource on any details for placement or layout of these lights. To this point, we took the town regulations and the state input on in lighting intersections, uh, curves, and points of particular interest. Uh, so our proposal here is to have a light installed on Autumn Ridge Road uh, on the far side to light the main intersection. As we are coming into the first curve here, uh, where we will start to have residents, coming down to the sharper curve, uh, we intend to have a light on either side to make sure that this area, which does have a rear drive access as a particular critical location, be well lit. And as we come down the road going into our final curve, which does have both a vertical element, a vertical curve to it and a horizontal curve, light that up as well as once exiting Cherry Hill Road. Um, and again, these uh, lighting specs are what were provided, our uh, best approximations to what was provided from both Eversource and uh, town en the town engineering department. And then lastly, I believe we have a, yeah, a detail sheet, which is specific to town details themselves. Um, at this point, I'd like to open it up for questions, comments. I know that there were uh, um, a comment sheet that Harry, sorry, uh, Mr. Smith provided. Uh, I do have some verbal responses to that, but as I'm sure we're gonna go through that in a second here, if I'm allowed to just respond uh, to those at that time, that works fine for me. Uh, Chuck Anders here. Thank you, Mr. Georgina. Um, at this time, maybe we'll ask Harry to review the staff report with us and then uh, we can follow up uh, with commissioner questions. Harry, you're muted. Thank you, Harry Smith Town Planner. Uh, Mr. Georgina, if you could uh, release your. Um... Yep, absolutely. I can pull up things. Thank you. Uh, stop sharing. There it is. Perfect. Um, let me share my screen here. So you should be able to see uh, staff report. I managed to revise to get out the door uh, late last uh, e early evening, yesterday afternoon, and get out to the commissioners and the applicant um, engineering firm. <clears throat> um, I, I think we're getting here with revisions and we're not quite there yet, I don't think. Um, it would have been uh, certainly preferable if we had had a little more time. Um, I couch these as preliminary comments because um, I hope I caught everything that I was commenting on initially and to see if it would have been addressed or not, and comments where it had been addressed. Um, I would like to note right off that the town engineer got a copy of the plans earlier this week and has not been able to conduct a review regarding uh, his comments on whether they've been addressed or not yet. Uh, there's also some information about fire flows that was provided, um, I think, uh, from our regional war authority through um, the applicant's engineer. Uh, I would certainly prefer to have comments from the fire marshal about the sufficiency of that and the location of the fire hydrant, even though. I think they did look at uh, the um, location of that approximately in the uh, plane with the cul-de-sac that was uh, withdrawn uh, last year. So all that out of the way, I'll just run quickly through um, my comments. Um, I guess I'd like to start with the open space. I think this was uh, referred to. Um, so just here and I'll... Uh, maybe start with this pink or purple area is the area of steep slopes greater than 25%. So uh, most of that is located in this about three and a half acre parcel that Slate is going to the Regional War Authority, which as was noted, owns land on the west um, north side of Cherry Hill Road, extending up and around uh, Lake Saltstall. 
within the watershed of Lake Saltstall. Um, so we have a letter of interest um, from the Regional War Authority. This was also mentioned, and we'll follow up with that as this progresses. Um, I'll also note the size chart here for the various lots has been updated. So I've got a revised chart that, that gives uh, more precise figures about the size of, of the proposed lots. And uh, so this will be amended on our further future version of this plan. Um, one of the main concerns I think I've got left um, with this, and again, just to maybe step back for a second, just for the audience, um, my job as town planner is to review the application for compliance with the subdivision regulations and the zoning regulations. So I'm limited in terms of my scope to the review of the criteria in those documents and whether the application meets them essentially. Um, so you understand what this report is based on. Um, so this is proposed all as lot seven. And this area would be basically where the house development is occurring. This area here would be encumbered as my understanding by a drainage easement um, that would go, I believe, to the homeowners association that would need to be a drainage easement as well to the town as required by the subdivision regulations. Um, but this basin, as was noted, um, is pretty deep, um, eight, 10 feet. I didn't, if I have the exact number here, but you can see on the side, the bottom's about 122-ish. And you're talking about where it really peels back about maybe 132, somewhere in there. So it's about eight to 10 feet at its deepest. Of course, that's never gonna be entirely filled with water because you've got a limit here. This is the, um, this area here is essentially gonna be a fill berm that's gonna hold the tension, um, this, this side will, it will consist of uh, this side of the detention basin. Um, so unlike some detention basins that are basically scoops in the ground, this will be scooped down on the uphill side and uh, the downhill side will be uh, basically a berm that will come up and then drop down. Uh, and that's the roadbed right here on that side. So this is um, a cross section through here, I believe. And right. uh, Georgina, correct me if I'm wrong in any nope, of this. No, nope, you're good. That's you're good. And this section over here is right through this line. So you can see over here, here's the crown of the road. Um, so you have varying depths depending on the uh, intensity of the storm events. So the highest level, of course, being the 100 year event. Um, and let's see if I have that number about how deep that would make the basin. I think it's about three and a half feet. Is that right? About. Uh, are, are you asking for freeboard or how much water is standing? How much water? Yeah, the depth of the water at the highest. I mean, uh, it's going to drain right out, but. It um, should be right there. I don't know off the top of my head. I have to look at the drawing. Hold on. Let me scroll yeah. back as well. It looks to be approximately three and a half feet. Um, so there is that. And you've got the six foot fence around it. I mean, I, I don't think this is the ideal situation um, in terms of. The location for this on a slope. Um, you know, there's really um, going back to the design here. Uh, this is three and a half acres. This whole site is just shy of the uh, 15 acres or a little bit shy of the 15 acres you would need for an open space residential development. Um, alternatively, if you didn't have the 15 acres, um, if there were five acres of open space, this would qualify for an open space residential development. I brought this up to the applicants and, and they do not want to pursue that option. They've been very clear about that. So, I mean, I raise it again because that would provide possibly some alternatives. If the lots could be reduced in size, you could possibly move this basin up the slope a little bit and might be a preferable situation, but there's nothing about it I can find that directly um, runs afoul of any regulation we have and I'll wait for any comments we may get back from the town engineer, but I, this is not really altered since the proposal and the design was submitted, I think back in uh, December. So um, this is really not completely new, but that's, uh, those are my thoughts about that at this point. Um, you know, again, I mean, you know, pools exist, they have fences around them. I am a little concerned it could be an attractive nuisance for kids and 
and problematic in that respect. Um, with respect to the erosion and sedimentation controls, um, I think those were explained pretty carefully. We're just looking for a little bit more um, in terms of how to protect the existing driveway that's gonna be used as the initial access road, I understand, to the development. That's a dirt road. Has, of course, not seen a lot of use. Um, and I think there's a potential for erosion given the severity of the slope. So um, I, I, we've requested consideration of the proposal for some additional erosion sedimentation control until uh, the new road and the anti-tracking pad at the beginning of it is established. Um, and the other own erosion controls for that are in place. Um, and that could be left to uh, the discretion of staff possibly in terms of whether they need to be installed or not, depending on how much activity there is and uh, when construction starts and that kind of thing. So I don't necessarily want to put a burden on the applicant and the developer, but I want to make sure that, you know, the situation is handled correctly. Um, I certainly think when we get down to it, probably a, a bond for erosion sedimentation control would be appropriate. And um, over at the Summit Place Development on West Main Street, there was a process set up as a condition of approval um, that would provide for monthly reports on the maintenance of the ENS controls um, and the provision, if necessary, the direction of staff of additional controls or the waiver of the reports if everything is working out well. So I think uh, I'd recommend the commission look at that for this development possibly as well. Um, one other question I had about the section 6.8 application and it, we're considering all this together. I'm assuming this is one big public hearing for all four applications, just to get that on the record. Yes, that's my understanding as well here. Check okay. it out. I'm wondering if about blasting. Uh, the comment I got back was not sure planning on blasting at this point. Um, so I'm wondering if there've been any subsurface investigations done out there to see if there is any ledge or are you going to certainly be excavating? Um, has there been anything like that done so at this point? Uh, Zach, George, and Giuliano, Giuliano Associate. I'm not letting him green. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Thank okay. You. I, I, I think it wasn't getting a green box. Just wanted to be sure again. Um, so we have done several deep piss pits on the site uh, as part of the stormwater control uh, design and reports, and we haven't hit any ledge. Okay. Um, so at this point, we don't have any evidence that we're going to hit ledge. Uh, obviously, if we start going through here and we do the two options are either if it's minor to chip away otherwise we would have to uh go through uh, securing a blasting permit yes okay um you know there is some provisions in the zoning regulations for providing uh um the amount of blasting and location of blasting in terms of that information so i would suggest probably a condition that would require um either consideration by staff or going back to the commission other uh, requirements that have been put on developments in the past include requiring a pre-blast survey um, of properties within 150 feet, I think was the distance of the uh, perimeter of the property. So that's something, and post-blast survey. And that might be something, you know, commission may want to put on. This development should it be approved. Um, one area here I just want to mention, uh, there's a little corner of lot five that extends down the slope. Um, what that does provide for when you account for the setbacks is this nice square large building envelope. Um, I would suggest that that corner of the property be encumbered by a conservation easement to prevent uh, the owner from really getting in there or anything happening in there since it's a very steep slope, uh, probably one of the steepest on the property. Um, a conservation easement would not create a setback so it would preserve this, this larger building envelope area. I did consider whether just maybe redraw the lot line here, but that would have chopped off a piece of this building envelope. So to avoid that, uh, an easement could be added right here. We are entirely open to that. That's that's a fantastic idea. Okay. Um, I think the street trees were um, noted um, in the past. Uh, previous town tree wardens have been concerned about having sort of monoculture of street trees, primarily because of uh, different diseases, infestations developing, and uh, should it be species specific, just sort of wiping out a whole area of street trees. So I think the prevailing wisdom is to, is to 
require a variety of species and um, so probably have something in here to have the uh, tree warden look at planting locations and that kind of thing to make sure everything's appropriate. Um, this is proposed currently in terms of a name as an extension of Cherry Hill Road. Um, however, um, currently, although the travel portion of Cherry Hill Road, this is North is up here. This is Cherry Hill Road. This is subject property. This is Hosley Avenue, which comes off of West Main Street, um, way down near the East Haven border. Um, it's like salt and stall, and um, this is brushy plain. Um, so currently the road does end here in terms of part of it you could drive down and the driveway comes up into the property and the road would swing up here under the plan. However, this portion here is arguably a paper street that connects up to Hosley Avenue. I'm not sure what the exact status of it is. I mean, it looks like a road that was probably admit possibly even goes back to colonial times. Um, currently, the uh, Regional Water Authority owns this area. I believe they own this parcel um, and they would own you know, the open space piece here. However, lot seven as it's configured would touch a little bit of this road frontage, if you will, on. Cherry Hill Road, and that frontage does continue down here. So whether the town would at this point, because same property on either, owns either side of the road, abandon the road or discontinue the road, um, I think needs to be looked at. I mean, I think the design that's proposed, frankly, was suggested by staff, uh, makes the most sense to swing the end of Cherry Hill Road up here and have it connect up with Autumn Ridge. Um, but I think the status of that before you know, create a road that's going to be named Cherry Hill Road and have lot numbers off of it, make sure that that status has been confirmed and the town is either proceeding or agreeable to that being abandoned. Um, let's see, on the different driveways, um, particularly for the two with the interior lots, um, should have a consideration of the site distance and propose some site triangles as uh, shown in the regulations. Um, while I'm on this map, though, I just want to point out there are several um, interior lots that were um, approved through various stages of this subdivision. I believe the Autumn Ridge subdivision is this area. Um, and it was a, a subsequent phase, if you will, of a larger development is all of this. I think, frankly, I believe this was all one property, one farm at one point. But you can see here, there's an interior lot here, one here, one here, um, one here. So this is not unusual, another one here. Um, so in terms of a development pattern over the neighborhood, having two more interior lots within the subdivision follows, frankly, the development pattern established previously in the area. Um, the electric utilities are not shown here, I understand getting information from Eversource possibly has been a little problematic, but um, something does need to be shown in the plan, even if it's a preliminary layout that might need to be adjusted later. Um, and the subdivision regulations clearly require underground service of um, utilities, including electric. Um, should also be some kind of note on the plan uh, stating that all the existing um, poles and so forth of the overhead service that ran up to the existing or dilapidated abandoned house be removed. Um, in addition, I would imagine the house, the footprint, any foundations from some of the uh, other structures that have been demolished in the property would all go. Um, but there should clearly be a note saying that all that's going to be removed from the property. Um, the Water Pollution Control Authority has approved the proposed, I believe it's a low pressure service connection, um, but uh, there are details of that design that are needed as part of that approval. Um, just want to point that out. I believe that's was uh, touched on in the town engineer's comments. On um, the street lights, I'm not sure I have that sheet up here, but um, well, here's the fixture, I suppose, at any rate. Um, I frankly don't understand how this is really proposed by Eversource since it um, has a, what they call, let's make this a little loose.
So if we go to, I think it's over here. So these are something called uh, the bug ratings. These are uh, backlight uplighting glare. Uh, for a fixture to meet the requirement of full cutoff from the Illuminating Engineering Society, uh, U needs to be zero. So all these have some uplight. Uplight is the amount of light that if you have a 90 degrees above the, the nadir, they call it, point down below my feet, basically. So you swing up 90 degrees, there's no light going this way. All the light has to go down below this plane. Um, so apparently these lights do throw some light up. And that's um, in contradiction to a fixture that meets the definition of full cutoff. So that needs to be examined. There are alternatives, I understand, they use for street lights. You have a cobra head, they have a flat lens. It should be a full cutoff version of that. Uh, there also is a state law that requires full cutoff fixtures and new subdivision street lighting, particularly if the fixture is going to be maintained by the town, which these, I understand, would. Um, so we'll need to work on that. Um, if, that if, if I may, um, I know the photometric plan set. There is the detail that was quite literally all that we were provided that yep. illumines rating from Eversource. Uh, right. That compared to looking at what was consistent in Autumn Ridge was how this particular light head was determined as the closest fit to all available provided information. Uh, unfortunately, I can spec whatever I want in here. Eversource is responsible for the installing, and they told us what they're going to install is X, Y, Z, and we've provided the best possible photometric plan we can based on the details they told us. I appreciate that, but we're really going to start. I think we need to start from the basis of using a full cutoff fixture. Um, so I believe they do have options that are, and they might look different, the Cobra headlights. So they might look like a town of country light, um, but that's going to meet the requirements of the regulations, I believe. And they've been used in other developments and other subdivisions um, in town. So I'll leave that comment there. Um, the only other comments I have are about, I think I mentioned the interior lot. So there are two sub, excuse me, special exception applications for lot five and lot two. Um, I just showed you that there are other lots in the neighborhood, um, similar to those. Um, there are landscaping requirements for special exceptions in the residential district. I don't think they make any sense to apply in this case because you're talking about not fitting in another lot or dividing a property within an existing development and possibly trying to screen that development from neighbors. Everyone's moving in here at once. Uh, the only possible exception to that is this property here, which I believe the house is somewhere in here and then there's a backyard and maybe I'll just look to see if I can, no, yeah, I can't see that in here. So the house, this is that lot. You can see the house is up against the road and then someone has purchased, um, He basically doubled the size of his lot by buying part of the adjoining property. Uh, it was retained from the, because uh, I don't think this is the original layout of the Autumn Ridge subdivision. Uh, but be that as may, this is a much larger backyard, whether it makes any sense of any landscaping here at all, or I mean, I can try and take a look at that and see if there's any um, vegetation on the lot two side of this property line that might make sense to require to be retained just to provide that buffer for this uh, existing property owner from the new lot development. So that's all I've got at the moment. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Chuck Anders here. Thank you, Harry. Uh, any questions, comments from commission members before we open it up to the public? Chuck, <clears throat> Fred right. Russo. Uh, just a couple of questions for clarification from the last time we reviewed this. Um, if I recall, uh, there were 11 lots, but I don't believe all 11 lots are going to be developed. Is that still the case? I thought they talked about developing nine, nine of the 11 lots and leaving two open for speculation, I guess. Is that still going to happen? Uh, I, I don't actually know that answer off the top of my head. I can get that information for you. Okay. 
another question. Um, I, I'm not familiar with the land itself, but it sounds like there's a lot of slopes and elevations here. Does any of the road coming in that you're proposing require any kind of guardrail for safety? Uh, yes, that is the case. The only portion of the road that is going to be requiring a guardrail is in the southwest corner where the road currently e or exits the current property. There will be a guardrail along the west side as that edge of the RWA property does drop off fairly steeply. Uh, we have included details for those. The town engineer requested that those be um, essentially the same style that is on the Merritt Parkway. Uh, the steel backed timber design so it will essentially it looks like a wood but it's got a um, uh, a steel backing to it to provide the structural strength I, I have one more question and this again for my own uh, uh review are the lots that are being proposed being proposed with houses or are the lots being developed sold off independently and uh each individual homeowner would build their own home uh the the latter so we're proposing the subdivision construction of the road and then it will be once essentially pur purchased to develop so once someone purchases they would then design what physical layout they'd want for the house exactly driveway garage configurations those type of details would be worked out at that time specifically um and would there would be individual uh, lot applications coming in for uh, these through for development. So, so I have one last question. Mm -hmm. What is the need for homeowners association if the property is going to be developed that way? So specifically the HOA is to uh, maintain the stormwater elements because in this particular case, uh, there is not a greater um, stormwater system for us to tie into down the road or to um, increase Essentially, there's not an existing stormwater system in Cherry Hill Road for us to utilize uh, for the road stormwater runoff. So we're taking not only the, dw the dwellings, but the road itself, collecting that into the stormwater detention basin. And the HOA is essentially there just to maintain that basin and the stormwater facilities on this road because they will be self-contained. Do you um, feel that the responsibility is, uh, is asking a lot for homeowners association uh, it seems and, and I don't know this I'm asking the question it seems pretty technical for homeowners association to, to be dealing with uh, Fred I'm, you're breaking up a bit for me let me tell me if I got this I right repeat you it? Just, uh, just let me try and see if I got you and if we got you I'll, we'll just go from this uh, so you're asking, is the responsibility of maintaining the stormwater okay. element outside of a normal request for homeowners association or over encumbering? Is that about right, Fred? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, and again, I, yes. I am just an EIT, uh, but we are currently, <laughs> I had a meeting last night uh, with an HOA that is performing maintenance on their own stormwater system in Hamden. Uh, this is not outside of the norm of what a HOA is capable of handling. And typically, uh, most elements of uh, maintaining these are cleaning elements that towns should have the responsibility, but are not always uh, up to date on. I actually think that HOAs do a little bit better job of policing their own systems than trying to police an entire town. I think this is a, a great opportunity for the town to have less responsibility in this case. Okay. Uh, Chuck Anders Chair, thank you, Fred. And thank Mr. you very much. Mr. Gina. Any other questions, comments from commission members before we open it up to the public? Hearing none then, let's open it up to the public. Does any member of the public wish to comment? Evan, uh, turn it over to you to recognize uh, anyone. Uh, sure, I'd just like to remind everybody that down at the bottom of your screen, you have a reactions button. Once you select that, there's an option to raise your hand or raise hand. Uh, please do so if you'd like to speak or you can indicate in the chat that you'd like to speak and I'll, I'll unmute you. I am 
not seeing anyone right now, but maybe we'll- I think somebody's waving their hand, Evan, um, yeah. labeled iPad. So I'm gonna unmute them. Sure. Please go ahead and, uh, and unmute yourself. And, and please identify you. yourself also before you make comments. Yes, this is Fran Proto from 16 Autumn Ridge Road. Um, just have a few questions uh, regarding the develop, not necessarily development, but the road again, because this has been our biggest uh, concern. Um, but I do have some other questions uh, that I'd like to bring forward. Um, so this road is going to go right down to Cherry Hill. It's going to be a through road. It's not going to be a from what I see from the map, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, it, it, uh, through may not be the correct term. It's an extension, so it's going to be the same road. It should be one road. Okay. Um, where is all this? If, if this were to get approved, where is the construction equipment going to be coming in and out of? Uh, currently, we are proposing that the, constru yeah, the construction equipment for the road is to start construction on Cherry Hill and work its way to Autumn Ridge. Okay. Um, you were referring to trees and all kinds of different things um, regarding plantings and, and such. Um, our backyard on 16, um, and, and certainly some of my neighbor right next door, we would certainly be infringed on. What exactly is going to separate our yards from the development, the homes that'll sit on the other side of the property? Uh, well, when individual homes come in, there are um, requirements for landscaping and such. We would be open to, uh, I don't want to say whatever you want, but uh, obviously we want happy neighbors. So uh, any suggestions from Autumn Ridge that they'd like to see, we'd be willing to consider implementing. Um. Harris, the town planner, just to interject for one second. And those are requirements of the regulations. Um, so if there's something perhaps that the applicant wants to put as part of bylaws of the homeowners association or some kind of restriction on you know the development of the lot. So there's some kind of landscape buffer or something. That's something they could certainly work out. Um, but that's nothing that would be part of an approval that the town staff, if that this goes ahead, would uh, implement. So, so the homeowners um, would have to deal with the builders and the developers to get that worked out. It will be outside the realm of this meeting. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, you, you discussed a lot about the water, um, more so on the opposite side of Autumn Ridge. What are the issues uh, potentially of water runoff on the Autumn Ridge side? Uh, Autumn Ridge is currently uphill gradient. Uh, there are not going to be runoff issues in terms of that. Um, the 175 Cherry Hill Road, uh, we're not directing any additional stormwater runoff. So the water that's currently sheeting, essentially, so when, when rain falls, it starts out by collecting and then it moves as a sheet along the ground. Um, so that's what I'm referring to when I say sheeting. So when the water that's currently uh, being directed specifically down towards uh, Abel Road, uh, so the Abel Road properties with the stormwater uh, detention basin in the background are not going to see an increase in their current um, stormwater runoff, so they won't notice a difference. And like I said, Autumn Ridge is uphill from us, so they won't see stormwater running off towards Autumn Ridge at all. Okay. We get quite a bit of runoff because we're on a slight hill, if you will, as you climb Autumn Ridge, and my home does get a, a lot of water um coming from the top of the cul-de-sac down a lot of water out there especially during uh pretty bad rainstorms as you know we've had over the last 10 15 years um i'd like to talk a little bit about that road because that's been the bone of contention um well let me let me step back just really quick on the lighting um autumn ridge lighting whatever if this were to get approved and whatever lighting you're all going to be able to get approved through whatever source or whatever i don't know how that all works i could tell you the lighting up here is 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 pretty bad and um 
I think we have three, maybe four lights in the entire 30 home development here. And someone could correct me after I stop talking um, and they could um, give their own input. And the lighting is very poor. So I'm really questioning even the lighting in this new development. And I know you don't have answers tonight because it's every source, it sounds as though every source is difficult to get answers from. Uh, but that, that still is an issue up here. And um, I just hope it's, if this gets approved that it's rectified and we have better lighting up here, at least in that development, uh, because we're, we're in the dark up here. It's pitch black here with those lights, the three or four we have. Lastly, the actual road going through our side yard and the potential of losing half of my driveway and my neighbor's driveway. And uh, this was discussed at the original onset of these meetings uh, back a year ago. And I'd like to discuss more. I'm gonna turn the meeting over to my fellow neighbors, whoever wanna speak, but I need to, I would like to know my wife and I, what exactly this is going to entail. If it's gonna be made whole, my driveway, because we have sprinkler systems and uh, driveways that are gonna be impacted by a road. And, um, it's going to be a major issue for us. So, and probably my neighbors as well. Um, so I would like that in the record. Um, and I hope that's something that could be in the record of how we're going to be protected and made whole on the damage that's going to be done. Thank you. <clears throat> Chuck Andrews here. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Proto. Uh, other members of the public wish to comment? Evan, did someone raise their hand? Uh, I don't see anyone else at this time, but I'd just like to repeat, um, you can indicate in the chat that you would like to speak or press raise your hand or simply just wave your hand in front of the camera if you'd like to participate. I think I saw Carl Muller, but I'm, I'm not sure, just trying to be helpful. I don't think Carl is here for this application, but Carl, if you'd like to speak. I do not see anyone else right now. Uh, oh, there we go. We got another one. Uh, Maria, could you please uh, identify yourself? I'm Maria Knigliaro. I live at 14 Autumn Ridge Road. I am the Proto's neighbor. So the driveway would be in between both our properties. Uh, back when this was introduced, um, the fact that we are a cul-de-sac, and yes, we did know about the easement, whatever, but my concern is, is this going to be a major street for those owners to get into, including trucks, fire trucks, ambulances? Um, very concerning because it's a very quiet street. We have a lot of children. We have uh, disabled people that walk all day long, animals. And I have a feeling that they're gonna be coming out of this street and into it with um, a force speed that is going to endanger our safety. What is the other side of the road uh, gonna be like? Is it gonna be a finished road? Or is it gonna be a rocky road that people are not gonna wanna use? This is what I'm, I'd like to know. Beyond our our scope, Cherry Hill will remain Cherry Hill Road. It will be a road that currently has dwellings and residents on it into a neighborhood much like yours. Um, no, the road oh, is, is very rocky. It's very bumpy. It's not a finished road. So if I had to choose between a nice road on Auden Ridge or if I had to go through Cherry Hill, I would pick Autumn Ridge. Is that road going to be asphalted and um, straight and, you know, a comfortable road to go through. This would be a question for your town representation. Uh, for selectmen and DOT, This that, that's not our, our purview and scope here. Oh, this will support, this road will support the traffic. But our road alone is not gonna support the traffic, especially your... in the spring to fall when you have veterans right. park and you have all the baseball and whatever, and 
people parking all the way up to our street. And you want, are asking for more traffic to come through there? It's very dangerous. Your street was designed with this subdivision in mind. In terms of that was 22, years, that was 22 ago. years ago, it was much different. And there is another street on the other side. Why is that street not being utilized as the main road? It is being utilized as the main road for construction purposes. And no, that's it, it, not my question. I understand that. Please, if you could let me finish, certainly it is being utilized as the main road for construction purposes, uh, much like you wouldn't require someone to fix a highway that would be a town road and would be you should reach out to your town about improving roads and repaving sur surfaces that's not our purview here but that's cherry hill road that's off of cherry hill road uh, the developer should be responsible for, for that road we are giving the town a free road through our property that is what we are responsible for wow okay well, Fran said this. Fran already uh, said that about protecting our um, our driveway and our sprinkler system and and all that. Hopefully, that'll be addressed. Uh, to to that point specifically, I'm under the impression that the applicant has reached out to uh, both sixteen and fourteen. Uh, and that is not true. That's not true. Nope, not me. Nobody, can Nobody said anything to us. Uh, well, 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 thank you very much. And perhaps uh, that's something uh, uh, that, that can be done. The hearing will be continued. Uh, we need some additional comments from town engineer and so forth. So perhaps, uh, uh, Mr. Giorgino, you, if that was your understanding, your applicant wanted the, your the applicant wanted to do that, perhaps you can do that between, before the uh, next year. Uh, we, we can confirm that. I just, to address specifically, the applicant has every intention of making whole. Uh, as part of this, uh, while improving the town right away, we will be correcting the driveway. That will be all done at the applicant's expense while we relocate these driveways that are in the town right away. And, and, and thank you. It sounds like some communi additional communication might be helpful. Understood. Uh, other members of public wish to comment? I see uh, Chris waving her hand, looks like. Uh, Evan? Hi, uh, Chris Montana, 19 Autumn Ridge. I live across the street from the Canigliaras and Protos. I would just like to echo what Maria just said about um, the road being finished properly, Cherry Hill Road. Um, if you, when this whole um, uh, application was uh, in place, we actually walked by foot, parked on the bottom of Cherry Hill Road and walked up to the property, um, <clears throat> which obviously is underdeveloped. But if you drive down the end of Cherry Hill Road, it's really not a road. Quite honestly, the people that live down there, I'm not even sure how they drive down the road because it's a dirt road. It's um, poorly maintained. I don't even know how they get it plowed because it's it's a true disaster. So I echo their, her concerns about um, if I had to drive down that road, I, I wouldn't want to drive down that road. It's not good for my car. It's not a pleasurable road to drive down. So the traffic is then going to filter down through Autumn Ridge Road, which is a very convoluted neighborhood. If you've been down here, you have to go Cherry Hill to Valley Brook to um, what's the other road? High Meadow. Um, and so I would appreciate, and, and you're saying that we should um, incur the, um, we should speak to our town reps with regards to uh, how that is, that area is going to be addressed um, from the development of the end of the development to Cherry Hill Road, is that correct? Do you have any idea how long, like that, what the uh, length of that um, like road would be? Is it like 500 feet? Is it thousand feet? I don't know that number off the top of my head. I, I, I could get you that number, uh -huh. um, but much like I've been writing my first selectman for years to get the pothole, pothole in front of my house fixed, it's not my job as the homeowner in front of the pothole to fix that pothole. It's That is an existing town road, and that would be the town's responsibility. Interesting. Well, it, I, I mean, I, I'm going to echo what Maria said. We have 
a lot of kids on this neighborhood. We have a disabled. Harry, what do you think about the feasibility of this road being fixed by the town? Excuse me. Are you directing quite? I, I didn't catch you in directing the question. Yes, yeah, so you. Um, okay. What is the feasibility of this, the distal part of uh, <clears throat> Cherry Hill Road um, from the connection from the development to the area where those two homes are located on the um, end part of Cherry Hill Road, right before the newest development where the road is actually pleasurable? Um, what's yeah. the feasibility of the town um, fixing those roads? Um, I will have a conversation with the town engineer and possibly the public works director about that. I mean, that's something that goes directly through my department here, but um, I can have a conversation, try to get some information for for you folks and the commission uh, before the next meeting. Right, because I'm thinking plows, fire trucks, ambulance, yep. general people just driving, not going to want to do it. And really, quite honestly, I really don't want that traffic in my neighborhood, that extra traffic. We're happy with the development. We, I did, actually didn't know about it when we purchased our house, but yeah. you know we've come to terms with the fact that it's coming. And as long as they make good on Maria and the Proto's um, malalignment of the driveways, and when they make uh -huh. good, then I think we'll be happy. But in addition to that, um, I think the town needs to step up and take care of the distal part of Cherry Hill Road that's going to connect to the new development. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Thank you. Uh, uh, anyone, uh, any other members of the public wish to comment? We are going to continue the hearing, but just <clears throat> else wish to comment. Jeff Holmes, I'll put his own. Um, Evan, do you see anyone? I do not see anyone else. Just scanning everybody's pictures one more time. Nope, I do not see anyone else. Okay. Okay, then. Um, Let's, uh, are, are there any uh, further comments um, from the applicant this time? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, I did, hold on uh, one second. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for that to be asked me right then. Uh, I, I did just want to uh, address specifically, I know the um, comments from uh, the town planner uh, were addressing uh, a lack of uh, the cut and fill calculations. Those were provided. Um, that would be, I, I forgot to send a digital, digital copy if that was what um, Harry was looking at previously, but they were physical copies included in the packet that was dropped off. Um, I just wanted to clarify with him that that is approximately what he's looking for. Just Harry. Can't hear Harry, you. you're muted. Harry, you're muted, yeah. Sorry, Harry Smith, Town Planner. Um, if you could point after the we continue the hearing, you know, I'll be in the office tomorrow, okay. uh, what that's about, because I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, um, I think I was asking for information about it was the blasting part of it if, in terms of the amount of material, if that's proposed, but um, we could talk about that after. Okay. Uh, Chris, you had a quick question. We were, what, what do you got? Um, can you uh, let Chris speak? Uh, yeah, I, 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 Based on the size of the lots um, with setbacks, what is approximately the size of the homes that will be built? Uh, they vary spot to spot. Let me, I'll give you a quick, uh, what the maximum footprint is on the smallest, which would give you approximately what the maximum house you could possibly build. Uh, hang tight one second, I gave you that. And will multi-family um, uh, homes be allowed to be built or just single family dwellings? Uh, the intent here is completely single family dwellings. Uh, the intent, but what is, is there a, if somebody wanted to build a multi-family home, would they be, would it be allowed? I would have to check the uh, zone regulations. Okay. I don't know that off the top of my head. That okay. that wasn't what we were discussing sure. uh, with the applicant, so okay. I didn't pursue that. Right. Uh, 
a minimum of four years? I, I think the answer is they can build exactly what you can build, uh, which is a single family home with the option of an accessory apartment. Exactly. Um, so just give me one second here while I just get you that area. Um, so the maximum possible building footprint, and I don't think anyone would possibly build this because it's outrageous, uh, would be 7,600. That is our smallest uh, buildable square, but that is a monstrous house. And no one would actually build that. What's the minimum? I mean, a tiny home of 500 square feet, well, I think, you know could be built. I'm talking about. I mean, the, the homes up here are about 3,000, 3,600 square feet. I, I would homes. imagine. My, I guess my question is like, you know, if there's going to be, you know, I would like the environment up here to sort of mirror what we have on Autumn Ridge. Um, and so I'm just curious as to, you know, with the setbacks, what the. Yes, the houses in that consistent size is what would be is what we're looking for. I thought your question was the worst case scenario if someone was to max this out and that would well, be- I mean, a, I know 7,000 square feet is not gonna happen. My understanding was from the previous meetings, this is an R4 uh, area. That means that they have to have a similar square footage or minimum square footage that we have in the area right now, uh, which is about 3,000. Uh, Harry, I, I, I don't believe that's the case. I don't believe there's a minimum square footage for a house. In the zoning regulations or so the what does the r4 area mean then that's a lot Sorry? what does r4 mean for this area for this guy? it's about the lot sizes and the setback requirements so that's the that's what the zoning controls but again you know it's highly likely they're going to build them i would imagine just to reiterate on uh, what mr georgina is saying um that they're gonna you know look at the market and maximize the potential for sale of lots so like they, have to be, they have to be houses. Somebody cannot buy a land and then put a camper on it, consider that a house. That is correct. Thank you. That's correct. Okay. Uh, well, well, okay. We're going to close the public portion. You have questions. We're, again, we're going to continue the, so, the, the hearing and uh, you'll be able to ask it in the next meeting. So, so we're just, yeah, yeah. so we're going to continue it. Public's going to be able to comment in the next meeting and everything. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, and, and uh, is there anything else you'd like to comment at this point, um, Mr. Georgina? I, I think I'm, I'm good at this time. Okay. I, I believe I'm gonna work with the town and just work, um, hammer out the remaining comments and questions, uh, especially once we get anything back from engineering. Any other questions, comments from commission members? Hearing none then, we'll, we'll continue this. Harry, should we continue this to our next meeting or do we need longer? Um, I'll leave that up to the applicant, but I suggest continue it to the 16th. If it needs to go longer, we can uh, do that then. Does that make sense? Works for me. Okay. okay. So then we'll continue this public hearing to our February 16th meeting. Again, it's also a Zoom meeting at seven o'clock, um, same uh, web address, I believe. So so this matter is these matters are being continued. So thank you very much. With that, we'll move on then to our next uh, agenda item. And that's uh, items number six and seven, which is uh, Joseph Lucini, applicant and owner, 12 Whitting, Whitting Farm Road. There's a special exception. There's two special exception applications, one for an accessory apartment and one for an oversized accessory structure. Is uh, the applicant ready to proceed on that one? Eric. Yes, I am. Do you? Uh... Can you guys hear me there? Yes. Sorry. Yes. yes, we can. I do not have a video, but um, I can share my screen here. Um, to start, Joseph Lucchini, owner of 12 Whiting Farm Road, an applicant. Uh, and as mentioned, I'm going up for two special exemptions, an accessory apartment and an oversized structure. Um, am I good to share my screen here? Uh, Harry, some top planner. Yes, you are. Okay. Can everyone, everyone see that? Yes, we can. Yep. So this is, um, I had Napis and Young, Young do an A2 survey of the property. Um, right here is the original, my house, my original structure at 12 Whiting Farm Road. Here on the right side is the road. Um, just to, I'll just scroll down here. The proposal is to slightly 
extend, which is just a gravel driveway and put a two car garage with a one bedroom apartment, kitchen, bathroom, all in one um, on the second story. It's uh, 25 feet by 25 feet. Um, you enter from the second floor and with this, we also had Navis and Young do a um, septic, septic design, which was designed and approved by the East Shore Health District. Um, I don't know how much more detail you want me to go into, but that's, that's the plan. Um, that's the, this is the proposed garage. I gave this to you. I'm not sure if this is really necessary for the planning and zoning commission, but I have it and the septic approval. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, check in this year. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Lucini. Uh, Evan, did you do the staff report on this one? Uh, I did. And like uh, Mr. Lucini had uh, described for us, uh, they propose a new accessory apartment uh, over a new um, detached garage. Uh, they meet the bulk requirements for the R4 district, as well as the accessory uh, use um, and structures criteria from section 3.8. Um, in my staff report, I had asked the applicant to confirm that um, the, extract, the accessory apartment would be less than 30% of the gross floor area of the principal dwelling. Uh, he had sent me over some numbers confirming um, that the proposed accessory apartment is under 30% of the principal structure. Um, they have not provided a landscaping plan and they meet the off street parking requirements. No lighting information has been submitted, but I have uh, proposed a condition that would require all compliance with section 6.7. Uh, they satisfy the criteria from section 7.4 for accessory apartments, as well as uh, the special exception criteria from section 9.8F. Um, staff is recommending uh, two conditions. One, that the, any proposed lighting has to be compliant with section 6.7, and that erosion controls measures have to be installed to the satisfaction of the zoning enforcement officer. Uh, Chuck in to share. Thank you, Evan. Um, I would like to raise another issue that um, I was uh, spoken in, in a prior accessory apartment application. I spoke wrongly, which is that in our regulations, we say that it's, I think it's, uh, we say that one of the conditions that the owner of an accessory apartment must file a deed restriction on the land records requiring that the unit, if rented, so, you know, if you don't rent it, don't worry about it. Uh, be rented at or below prices that would qualify the apartment as affordable housing as defined by Connecticut General Statute Section 8-30G. That's a requirement of regulations. There was a public act that was adopted uh, 2129 that I thought made that illegal. Turns out it didn't. <laughs> um, it, it, what, it, what it says is that if, if we didn't opt out, then you couldn't, you couldn't do that, but we did opt out. And what it also says is that um, they're not counted against you when they, when they do the percentage of affordable units. So I guess my question to the applicant uh, it would be, uh, is, is, is this, I don't know what your intended use is. This is typically not really a hardship. Um, it does, you know, put the, it, it increases, it shows that the town's doing something for affordable housing at a, a usually a minimal burden for property owners and it's a requirement of regulation. So uh, I guess my question is, would this, uh, uh, does the applicant have any uh, issue or concerns if, if we required this as, as a condition? Which is- I do not, um, you know, my, my, uh, my brother lives with me and this is, this is for him. It's, it's not gonna be rented and um, it, it really doesn't matter to me. I, I, I was talking to Evan earlier and if that's something that I have to do for, for approval, you know, I would just ask that, you know, you could hopefully, uh, you know, approve with the condition that I have this for, for zoning because I was unaware right. until, you know, this afternoon, but it, but it's no issue for me, um, okay. in that regard. 
Great. No, I, I thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, uh, understood. Uh, with that, uh, are there other questions or comments from commission members before we open up the public? Hearing none, let's open up the public. Any member of the public wish to comment? Just like to remind everybody down at the bottom of your screen, you have a reactions button. And if you'd like to participate, uh, please click that reactions button and then the raise your hand option. Or you can indicate in the chat that you'd like to participate. Looks like we have one person uh, named Paul. Paul, could you identify yourself? Hi, uh, this is actually Hannah. I'm at 14 Stony Creek Road. Could you, um, would you mind showing the rendering of the exterior of the unit again with share no screen? Problem. It's up there just for a second. I can, I'm not really sure what it has to do with the. Can you guys see this? Yeah, thank you so much. So you mentioned about, you know, the, the there's a slight rise between our two properties, which I'm hoping will take care of some of this, but in terms of turning what is now a nice sort of continuous dark space into something that has having light from an accessory unit, the any exterior lighting would be governed by, um, you know, would, would have to use fixtures that limit light penetration into neighboring properties is that right yes is the, so the back this is the back of the house is the entrance or the back of the accessory dwelling unit is the entrance so that is facing away from Whitting farm road um it looks facing, like the back the back yeah. is facing towards your your property yeah and that's all woods and i don't really plan on shining lights directly into the woods there so i don't and on top of that i don't there might be one window in the back, I think, if okay. I look at it, but it's there, there's not yeah. even a proposed window. So there, okay. there really shouldn't, I'm not clear. There's there's very minimal, um, there's, there's really no trees that have to be cleared and okay. there's some brush, but none of it is going to affect any kind of, uh, you know, barrier that is there currently. Right, or, or affect sort of the view shed from this side of things. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there other members of the public who wish to comment? I do not see anyone at this time. Okay, so I think then we can close this matter as public hearing and then we can bring this up, uh, I, th I think uh, after we close our public hearing. So thank you very much. Uh, that brings us then to our next agenda item, which is uh, Kevin J. and Robin J. Dextrader, applicants and owner of 40 Pent Road, special exception for accessory apartment. Let's see uh, applicant here on that one. Uh, the applicant has withdrawn their application. Okay. Um, they will be heading back to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, so we will potentially be seeing them after they appear before the ZBA in March. Okay. Okie doke. So we'll, uh, that application has been withdrawn. So that brings us into item number nine, which is Richard Hellman and Susan Levy, applicants and owner, 230 Pleasant Point Road. This is a special exception, 6.8 grading within 100 feet of a critical coastal resource and coastal site plan for building reconstruction and partial foundation replacement. So applicant here on that one. Harry, could you make Jim a co host? Oh, already oh. did. All set, yeah. Uh, good evening, Jim Pratty, Chris Golo Engineering, uh, here at 420 East Main Street in Brantford, uh, uh, representing Richard Hellman and Susan Levy. Uh, this, um, this, prop this project has kind of taken on a life. Uh, so there's an existing house, uh, and I'll bring up the uh, map in a moment. There's an existing house that there were some renovations and very minor additions to. Um, uh, as they got going with some, you know, exploratory and um, uh, digging and, it, it, you know, that sort of thing, uh, it became clear that for a number of reasons, um, keeping half of the foundation uh, was not really feasible because there's uh, a number of water issues. And the existing structure, which has, which had, um, 
um, less than normal ceiling heights um, created also um, insulation uh, issues. And I'm not privy to the building code, but I understand that the last revision of the building code did some extreme stuff to the R values and none of that could re reasonably be met with the old structure. So what they're going to do is take it down, replace the portion of the foundation that's the problem and then rebuild it. But it's getting rebuilt on the same footprint. It's just gonna end up being a little bit taller than it was. Um, so I will share the map. Hopefully you can see that. Um, So um, there's an existing home here, an existing garage and an existing cottage. They've been there for many years. The cottage was just recently um, renovated. Um, that also was in some, um, uh, some need of repairing for water issues and insulation and other things. Um, but uh, so this is the, the house, you can see the little dark areas are the, the areas that we were originally expanding it, and that still will be, but the rest of it is on the existing footprint. The only addition is a upper level bridge element that connects because this garage is at basically the second story. So there'll be a um, connecting piece so that you can get from the garage into the house without having to go down and then in during, you know, inclement weather. The other piece of this is an in-ground pool, which really triggers the cam um, because there is some grading associated with this um, in-ground pool. But this has um, gone to multiple times, gone to East Shore. Um, we satisfied their requirements and um, we're, we're, we're here for your approval at this point. Uh, there is letters, I think, believe in the file from the neighbors over here uh, in support um, I, I know I've seen um, emails. Uh, I think they're in the zoning file. They may be, they're part of the ZB, original ZBA um, application, but I do have, I think I have to unshare. I do have, um, let's see if I can share it. So this was the original uh, email, um, again, from the Holt, uh, Roger Holt, uh, Sharon Cousy, Bill Horn, Leah Brillmeyer, Roger Holt, Sharon Cousy. So they were, um, they were in support of the project to demolish and reconstruct the old house. Um, so, I mean, that's basically, I could put the, not back up, but um, so that's basically it. There, there is an existing dirt road here that uh, one of the other properties does um, use. So they have a, they had a way in currently um, to get into the property. So they don't need to um, encumber any of the shared driveway that the neighbors use um, with any of the equipment. They can come in this way, um, and they. This is for them. That um, they're the the. The couple now are living temporarily in the cottage um, until this happens, and then they're going to move back into the main house once the construction is done. Uh, Chuck Anderson, thank you, Mr. Purdy. Anything else? No, I think this is a pretty basic application. Again, it's it's we're because of um, because of the grading, we, we triggered a special exception and then the cam for the pool. Great. Uh, I check in just here. Evan, I think you did the uh, staff report for this one. Do you want to review that with us? I did. Like Mr. Purdy stated, it's a uh, two or a special exception for grading within 100 feet of a critical coastal resource and a coastal site plan uh, to include uh, redoing some of the foundation and the construction of a pool. Um, they meet the standards of the R5 district. Uh, they meet the parking requirements, and a condition has been added that any proposed lighting must, keep, must be compliant with Section 6.7. Um, they had added erosion control measures to their site plan, and originally some of the slopes were 
um, over our three to one ratio, but uh, Mr. Peretti had re revised the site plan uh, to make them compliant and he presented those tonight. Um, the commission would need to find that the erosion controls proposed to the extent that they are alternatives from the Connecticut DEP 2002 guidelines for soil erosion sediment control are acceptable. And based on the application materials presented, uh, they satisfy the special exception criteria, as well as the coastal site plan review criteria from section 9.7. Um, staff recommends two conditions that uh, erosion control measures are installed to the satisfaction of our zoning enforcement officer and that all lighting is compliant with section 6.7. Dr. Commissioner, thank you, Evan. Any questions, comments from commission members before we open up to the public? Um, Joe Chavik speaking. Um, were there any elevation adjustments made to the first, you know, to, to raise this for? Um, sea level rise and stuff like that? Um, Jim Freddy, so we are actually out of the FEMA flood zone on this property, but the, the first floor elevation is is well above already. Um, I think that, let's see, where's the flood zone? Flood zone line, okay. Um, elevation 12, and I think this first floor is at like 16. 17. Yeah. Can't see it on here, but um, so we are, we are a few uh, more than a few feet above the current, but we're out of the flood. All this work is actually taking place outside of the, the FEMA flood zone elevation. Okay, um, thank you. I, I didn't, I didn't want to turn this into a big deal. It's just that the numbers tend to pixelate whenever I get the uh, PDFs and I try to enlarge them. It's just a matter of information, so we can just okay. keep going. <clears throat> Check in your chair. Thanks, Joe. Uh, any other questions, comments from commission members before we open to the public? Hearing none, any member of the public wish to comment? Evan, you see anybody? I do not see anyone, but I just want to repeat down at the bottom of your screen, reactions button. You can uh, select raise your hand to indicate that you'd like to participate. I do not see anyone at this time. Great. Mr. Peretti, any additional comments? Uh, no, uh, just that I would uh, comment, uh, Joe, that the, the, the pool elevation is roughly uh, 16, but the first floor of the house is at 21. The adjacent flood zone is 12. So we're quite a bit above, that's all. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, comments from commission members or staff before we close this matter? Hearing none, then we'll close this matter as a public hearing, and then this is something we can uh, take up in a bit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prey. That brings us then to item number 10, which is Gene Wood, applicant and owner, 22 Collins Drive, special exception for a special uh, accessory apartment, excuse me. Is uh, applicant here on that one? Yes, sir. Jim Prey, Prescola Engineering. Um, let's get this right on the screen. Uh, so this is the uh, property at 22 Collins Drive. It's at the end of a cul-de-sac, an existing house um, and garage here. Um, the, the current owner's daughter and granddaughter are um, going to live with them. And so they're adding on an accessory apartment at the end of the house. Um, we do have um, the front elevation this is the existing house and this is the this is the addition so that and there's a little porch on the side so it'll kind of continue the look of the existing house uh there is a floor plan that actually shows that some of the space being expanded is actually expanding the um the main part of the house as well um, and providing a second stair from inside the house the main house down to the lower level um we did go to the ZBA because the, even though it's, it is under 900 square feet, we are um, a little bit over the uh, 30%. Uh, so we got a variance for that really. Um, and, it, and it steps back a little bit and really couldn't do it any other way because they're, the property is encumbered by a sewer easement that goes um, kind of diagonally across this lot now. 
And then we've added a, a turnout area, which would double as an extra two parking spaces. But um, that's it, pretty simple. Chuck in is here. Thank you, Mr. Preddy. Um, I will uh, make the same comment I made on the other application uh, for the accessory department, which is that our current regulations do state that the uh, for accessory apartments that the owner must file a deed restriction on the land records requiring that the unit if rented be rented at or below prices that would qualify the apartment as affordable housing as defined in 830G. Um, sounds like this is kids, it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, but I had said, oh, I thought that a public act 2129 had made that illegal and I was incorrect. It, it, it changed it, but it didn't make it illegal. So that's still part of our regulations. Would that, um, you know, compliance with that present an issue uh, for your uh, your clients? No, uh, Chuck, in fact, uh, Jim Preddy again, um, when I start these jobs, whatever, when I kind of tell everybody about that deed restriction and I was really unclear of the change, so I never brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're okay. <laughs> right, okay, great, thanks. Uh, questions, comments from anyone before we open up to the public? Joe, by you, so I have one short question. Sure. Um, this extension, is that going to include a, a full solar or it's going to be on a slab? Um, good question. Uh, it is going to have a basement, yes. Unfinished okay. basement, but a basement, yeah. Joe, you know, any other questions? Oh, okay. I just know I look at the print here and I can see it looks like an extension of the, of the existing cellar. I just want I was just want to see if it was uh, that true or not. That's all. Yes. No, no other reason. Thank you. Okay, sure. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Any other questions from uh, commission members before we open up for the public? Hearing none, let's uh, open up the public. Any member of the public wish to comment on this application? Oh, did I, did we even do the staff report on this? I think we forgot, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> uh, Evan, you wanna review the staff report for us? I'm sorry. Uh, sure, uh, the applicant satisfies the bulk requirements of the R3 district. Um, they satisfy the parking requirement. Um, they did get a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, on December 20th for an accessory apartment larger than 30% of the principal dwelling unit. Um, a condition has been added for lighting and based on the application materials, they satisfy the special exception criteria. Uh, and like I said before, staff recommends two conditions, erosion control measures satisfied to the Zoning Enforcement Officer and any proposed lighting has to be compliant with section 6.7. Thanks, Evan. Any questions, comments from commission members again before we open up the public? Not uh, just one more thing. I, I will be adding one condition about that um, deed restriction as well. Great. Thanks, Evan. Um, any member of the public wish to comment? Evan, you see anybody? I do not see anyone at this time. Okay. And uh, we'll close the public portion. Uh, Mr. Preddy, any further comments? No, sir. I think we're any, pretty straightforward. Uh, any further comments from uh, the uh, uh, staff or commission members? Nope. Okay, hearing none, then we'll uh, close this matter as a public hearing. This is something I think we can uh, take up in a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Preddy. Sure. Brings us then to item number 11, which is Edward Esborn, 24 Standard Avenue, a special exception for accessory apartment. Uh, is the applicant ready to proceed on that one? That's me again. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jim Preddy, for the record, Chris Gold Engineering. Um, let's see. Let's get this on the screen. Um, so here, the same situation, well, very similar situation. Um, the current owners, um, uh, children, our um, son and family are um, going to move into the main house and the parents are gonna move into the accessory apartment. Um, 
this is kind of a common thread. We I actually had another one that got pushed to the next meeting, but um, what uh, th this lot this design is a little different because you can see this kind of long narrow lot that the house sits in now. Um, we were able to make the the addition sort of linear uh, to keep it uh, conforming. It will still have the garage underneath, but it'll be attached by a new uh, mudroom, I think laundry area. Uh, that'll um, be accessed from the new house, from the main house. Um, we did also for this one, get it, we are at, we are at 900 square feet, but it is because of the, the house is rather uh, a little smaller. Um, we are over 30, 30%, so we did get a variance for that. And um, let's see, we did, so this is looking from the side, the garage doors and then the, and the uh, apartment above. This is just the covered porch area um, over here. Um, from the other side, from the other side, it looks like this. But if I go back to the plan, that, that's looking from this side, but this, this this house is owned by the same family, so I don't think they're gonna mind. Um, and just to give you a sense for scale, uh, hopefully you can see that this is the house we're adding on to, and this is the house that exists next door already. So, and we're not we're only going a couple feet taller than this, um, not not anywhere near the height of this structure. So I think it's you know, and and there's existing um you know buffer landscape buffering on the other side so i don't think it's really gonna affect anyone um but again same thing deed restriction for the um uh, rented to others and family we, we kind of thought that was always part of the gig so um that's also acceptable here <coughs> chuck can you share thank you mr pray uh evan did you you did this one as well you want to review that with us uh sure uh, the applicant meets the bulk requirements for the r3 district um as well as the parking requirements uh a condition has been added for lighting they meet the criteria for the accessory apartment um requirements of section 7.4 they received a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals on December 2nd to make a accessory apartment over 30% of the principal dwelling. Um, based on the application materials, they satisfy the special exception criteria. Staff recommends that a condition for any proposed lighting to be compliant with section 6.7 be added, as well as erosion controls shall be installed to the satisfaction of the zoning enforcement officer. Right, and, as, and the accessory and the uh, affordable deed restriction right yes okay uh questions comments from commission members before we open up the public hearing none let's open up the public any member of the public wish to comment on this see anyone evan i do not see anyone okay one more time any member of the public wish to comment seeing none uh we'll close the public portion of the public hearing Mr. Preddy, anything else? No, I think you've heard enough from me. I'm good. Good. Any uh, comments from commission members or staff? Hearing none, then we'll close this matter as a public hearing. And again, this is something I think we can take up in a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us into our minutes from our January 19th meeting that were circulated. Um, you've had a chance to review those. And if you have, does someone wanna make an motion with respect to approval of the minutes from our January 19th, 2023 meeting? Chadwick will make that motion. Fred Russo uh, makes a motion for the minutes. Okay, so we'll make, we'll give Joe the motion and Fred the second yeah. to yeah. approve. Uh, yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe Chadwick? Chadwick is in favor. Fred Russo? Fred Russo in favor. Joe Vayuso. Vayuso in favor. Massimo. Massimo is in favor. And Chair is also in favor. So those minutes are approved. Harry, do we have any correspondence? Uh, where did Harry go? We lose Harry. Um, Harry, you muted. Is there any correspondence? Sorry. 
Uh, correspondence. I don't believe there's any correspondence this week. No, there is none. Okay, great. Okay, then let's go back then to the public hearing items that uh, we may be able to uh, act on. I think we can start with, uh, I think there are items number six and seven. That was the uh, Mr. Lucchini. That was uh, actually two special exceptions, one for the accessory apartment and one for the oversized accessory structure. Um, Harry Smith, town planner, just to uh, clarify for the record, um, Ms. Ligori, <laughs> you would be sitting in for our missing regular member, uh, Marcy Paluzzi. Okay. Now, just one question on this one. Is this two applications? Can we do one motion for two applications or what? Uh, that's my only question. Do we have to do the motion twice or? Um, they're separate applications. And some of the, I think the conditions really both special exceptions. So finding is fine. Um, and I think two would only apply to the accessory apartment. Um, so maybe, yeah, I mean, it, the end result really, if you could take two separate motions, you could have for the accessory apartment, you could have findings one, conditions one and two, A and B. And then for the um, oversized accessory structure, you could have um, just the first condition. Okay. Okay, um, then why don't we do that? So let's first take the first application. Looks like it's the accessory apartment application. Is one? Is there one? It doesn't matter which one we do first, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, item number six is the accessory apartment. So can you pull up the the res the findings and conditions for that one? And again, that's uh, as in the staff report. And I think you added the uh, condition regarding the um, the uh, dwelling unit one right, for the, the deed restriction, which I think was okay with this applicant and it's in our rec, so. Yeah. So with, with, with that, uh, any, any discussion? If not, does someone wanna make a motion to approve okay. the application by adopting the findings and conditions okay. as set forth in the staff recommendation that's presently presented right in front of us. Fred Russo, make that motion. Someone okay, will... motion to approve uh, by Fred. Is there a second? Joe Vayuso seconds. Second by Joe Vayuso. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe Chadwick? Chadwick is in favor. Fred Russo. Fred Russo in favor. Joe Vayuso. Vayuso in favor. Massimo. Massimo's in favor. And Chair's also in favor. So that's item number six. Let's go to item number seven. That's a special exception for the oversized accessory structure. And again, I think that uh, we see uh, uh, Evan, I'm assuming, is diligently uh, labeling that motion in front of us. And again, it's the same uh, uh, finding, one finding, one condition on this one. It's in the staff report, which is the finding the one and condition number one as presented in front of us. Uh, if, is there any discussion? If not, would someone want to make a motion to approve this application by adopting the finding condition as set forth in this staff report? Chadwick will make. Joe Vayuso's got it. Okay, we'll give it. Joe Vayuso made the motion. We'll give Joe Chadwick the second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe Chadwick? Chadwick is in favor. Fred Russo? Fred Russo in favor. Joe Vayuso? Vayuso in favor. Massimo? Massimo Ligori in favor. And chairs also in favor. So that brings us then to uh, Item number nine, which is uh, Mr. Hellman's 
application. This is a special exception for the uh, 6.8 grading and coastal site plan. And uh, Evan has uh, posted his uh, recommended finding and condition for this one. Again, one finding and uh, two conditions, uh, standard conditions with respect to that. Um, seem to be, again, fairly non-controversial. Neighbors are in favor. Um, any comments? And if not, does someone will make a motion to approve the application by adopting the findings and conditions as set forth in the staff recommendation? Um, Hello? Harry Smith, Town Planner. Evan, are we including the assessor department? No, this one this is just- Not the, an accessory. This is the only not accessory department application point. from Mr. Preddy tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, I wrote the wrong number down. This is number eight, right? Okay. Thank yeah, this, you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is number nine. Eight. Yeah, I well, eight was withdrawn and whatever. So maybe it's number eight. Yeah, it's it's the 230 Pleasant Point Road one. Oh, I'm looking at the legal notice. I'm sorry. It's right. we have several of them. Okay. okay. My apologies. Okay. With that, does someone want to make a motion to approve this application by adopting the findings and conditions set forth in the staff recommendation? Fred Russo, I'll make the, uh, that uh, motion. Okay, motion approved by Fred Russo. Is there a second? Chadwick seconds. Joe Chadwick seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Chadwick. Chadwick is in favor. Fred Russo. Fred Russo in favor. Joe Bayuso. Bayuso in favor. Massimo Liguri. And Massimo's in favor. And Chair's also in favor. So that application is approved. That brings us then to, I believe, item number 10, which is a special section at 22 Collins Drive for Gene Wood. You can pull that one up. And again, um, this is, uh, again, uh, the accessory apartment. There were, uh, I think this was uh, pretty non-controversial. And uh, we have this staff recommendation with, again, the addition about the deed restriction. That's number 2B. And if that looks okay, does someone want to make a motion to approve this application by adopting the staff recommendation, including the one finding and the two conditions, including condition 2B, which is the deed restriction one. Are you so moved Chad to approve? Motion Chadwick, second. Joe Viuso and seconded by Joe Chadwick. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe Chadwick. Chadwick is in favor. Fred Russo. Fred Russo in favor. Joe Viuso. Viuso in favor. Massimo. Massimo is in favor. And chair is also in favor. So that application is approved. So that brings us to our last one, which is Edward Os Esborne. That's the Standard Avenue one, 24 Standard Avenue, special section for accessory apartment. And uh, Evan, can you pull that one up? Looks familiar. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, again, it seems to be a fairly straightforward application. Uh, and it's uh, the recommended staff recommendation, again, is with the finding and the two conditions, including the deed restriction is 2B. If that looks okay, does someone make a motion to approve this application by adopting the staff recommendation as to the findings and the conditions? Fred Russo, so moved. Motion made by Fred. Is there a second? Chadwick seconds. Joe Chadwick seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe Chadwick. Chadwick is in favor. Fred Russo. Fred Russo. In favor. Joe Bayuso. In favor. Massimo Liguri. And Massimo's in favor. Jair's also in favor. So that application's approved. Okay, that brings us into old business. And old business, uh, item number one is uh, the McDonald's. Again, that was something we did in the peer review. And I think, uh, you know, we, we someone's made a bid, but uh, we haven't set the public hearing yet. We need our own expert to to do its own independent review of the uh, traffic and the stacking yeah. issue there. So, but we'll schedule a public hearing for that when it's ready. And then items number two, three, and four, uh, 
they're all scheduled for a public hearing at our next meeting on February 16th. Um, did I get that right, Harry and Evan, as to business? Does that look right? Just reading our agenda. Harry Smith Town Planner, I believe that is all correct. Okay. I bring this into new business. I don't see anything listed, which is unusual. Um, but we uh, do have, I think, some other things coming up. Uh, okay, and that brings us into other business. And we have a number of bond establishments and releases. <clears throat> and uh, looks like we have our zoning enforcement officer with us for firsthand testimony if we want to cross examine her about this, these uh, bond establishments. So, so can you run us through them? What's the first one? Bond establishment 14 Hotchkiss Grove Road. Uh, a bond has been requested for a driveway apron, and, and our CEO recommends a $1,000 uh, bond uh, for you to approve. Okay. Any questions from anyone? Not that someone will make a motion to approve the bond, a $1,000 bond for 14 Hotchkiss Grove Road. Fred Russo, so moved. Motion made by Fred. Is there a second? Chadwick seconds. Second, Joe Chadwick. Further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Chadwick? Chadwick is in favor. Fred Russo? Fred Russo in favor. Joe Bayuso? So in favor. Massimo Liguri? Massimo is in favor. And chairs also in favor. I have number two, a bond release for 5 7 Euclid Street. What's going on with that? Uh, our ZA, ZEO had inspected uh, the site at 57 Euclid Street and recommends the release of a bond in the amount of $2,841. Okay. So I want to make a motion to release the $2,800 bond for 57 Euclid Street as recommended by our zoning enforcement officer after her diligent inspection. Who made that motion? Somebody. Chadwick made that motion. Joe Chadwick made the motion to release the bond. Is there a second? Massimo seconds it. Second by Massimo. Further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Chadwick? Chadwick is in favor. Is Fred Russo in favor? Fred's in favor. I think that was a favor. Joe Viuzo? Yes. Massimo? Yes. Massimo's in favor. And chair's also in favor. Next one is a bond release for 11 Euclid Street. Uh, once again, our CEO inspected the site at 11 Euclid Street for landscaping and a driveway apron and recommends the release of a bond in the amount of $2,000. So we'll make a motion to release that two grand bond for 11 Euclid Street. As recommended by ZEO. Vayuso, so move. Joe Vayuso makes that motion. Is there a second? Two. Yeah. Okay. Massimo seconds. Massimo seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor? Joe Chadwick? Chadwick is in favor. Fred Russo? Fred Russo in favor. Joe Vayuso? So in favor. Massimo? Massimo is in favor. Joe is also in favor. Next one is to establish a bond uh, for 294, 296, and 298 Leeds Island Road. Why is that on there twice? On our agenda. I don't have an answer for that right now, but maybe Jane can explain it to us. But uh, they are requesting the establishment of a bond for hydro seating at 296 and 6 Arborvitae to be planted along the driveway of the subdivision. Uh, and she recommends $3,370. $3,370 bond for uh, hydro seating and arborvitaes uh, for this, uh, for 294, 296, and 298 Leeds Island Road. So, someone make a motion to establish a bond as recommended by our ZEO in the amount of $3,370 for that property. Fred Russo, so moved. So moved by Fred. Is there a second? Massimo seconds. Massimo seconds. Further discussion? All in favor, Joe Chadwick? Chadwick in favor. Fred Russo? 
Fred, did I agree? All in favor. Excellent. Joe Vayuso? All in favor. Favor. Massimo? Massimo's in favor. Chair is also in favor. And item number five is the same as item number four. Was that a typo or was is there actually another bond for the same property? There is another bond for, um, this is for the remaining 11 iron pins that need to be placed in regards to the new lot lines associated with the subdivision uh, for 294, 296, and 298 Leeds Island Road. And our ZEO recommends uh, the establishment of the bond of, in the amount of $825. Okay. So I want to make a motion to establish a bond for $825 to secure the uh, performance of eight iron pins being placed on the property for 294, 296, 298 Leeds Island Road is recommended by our ZEO. Chavik will make that motion. Okay, Joe Chadwick makes the motion. Joe Vaiuzo seconds. Further discussion. All in favor, Joe Chadwick. Chadwick in favor. Fred Russo. Fred Russo in favor. Joe Vaiuzo. All in favor. Massimo. Massimo's in favor. And Chair is also in favor. That brings us into our planner's report. Harry, what's going on? Uh, Harry, Smith Town Planner. Really not a lot new to report or really anything. Um, but I would like to. Um, introduce again our new zoning enforcement officer Jane Ellis and uh, maybe Jane can say a few words about her background and if any questions have any questions um, and have a little quickie discussion. So Jane. Sure good evening everybody nice to meet you all officially. I've been in planning and zoning for four months now. I just got my Casio membership today. I come from the building and engineering department and which I was there for three and a half years before coming across planning and zoning. Jane, that's exciting. Are they treating you well over there? They haven't beat you up too bad? They no. have not as of yet, but there's Doesn't... always time. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, excellent. Well, we're, we're, we're glad you're aboard and uh, Hope you're uh, excited. I don't know why you made the transition from engineering to uh, ZEO, but hey, get out there and have some fun. I enjoy it. I absolutely love it. It's a great move for me. Excellent. Uh, Harry Smith, Town Planner. Uh, uh, Jane is oh, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead, Fred. I, I was just going to say welcome aboard. We're glad to have you with us. Thank you so much. Very, very thankful. Uh, again, Harrison Town Planner, Jenny has jumped in very well. We're very happy to have her here, as everyone else said, and uh, look forward to um, um, her ever-increasing knowledge of planning and zoning. <laughs> For sure. So uh, the only thing, other thing I'll report is um, I have received news that I have passed the first half of my Casio test, so apparently I am scheduled to take the second half uh, later on this month, so I will uh, let you know if I'm successful in obtaining a full Casio designation or if I failed in the attempt. So pass that on. So probably sometime in March, I will know, I'd imagine. Okay. So that gives us more options for enforcement. If for uh, some reason Jane goes away and uh, goes to Hawaii for, you know, something exciting, we can make Harry issue those cease and desist and whatever. So excellent. Okay. Anything else? I think that's it. Evan, unless it's something I'm forgetting that you have. No? Okay. Okay. All right. Did we want to talk about the potential for having our zoning enforcement officer establish bonds? Um, I think it's a little earlier than I thought it would be. Um, uh, maybe we can do that on another night. I mean, we could just introduce the topic if people want to have a 10 minute conversation about it uh what's what's the commission want to do in other words we we just had six five items on our agenda <laughs> that we wouldn't have to have on our agenda if we amended our regulations to allow the ceo under proper supervision to establish the bonds um i you know, I, I guess that's the issue. Is it, do they have to be established by the Planning Zoning Commission or is this something we can by regulation delegate to the, um, to staff, you know, under, yeah, and with, the, with always the option that if there's questions or there's disputes, they can bring it towards the commission. My, my thought is that's a good idea because 
<laughs> I can't recall any time we've ever questioned the amounts of a bond or whether we should or shouldn't. We typically just say, yes, we go through the motions because we're required to. And, you know, it takes whatever, it takes time. So anyway, that's my thought. Okay, um, right. I mean, we're, we're asked to approve a, a number, but we don't have any background on how that number arrives. So we're just taking on every on the zoning enforcement uh, officer's uh, word what how she came to that. What we're doing is uh, just something that we have no knowledge of. Um, usually, what happens is I request a um, quote from the landscaper, the surveyor, whoever it happens to be, for what the amount is going to be. Um, in order for us to establish the bond. Um, so behind the scenes, there are usually quotes that have been given to me from whoever the landscaper is, whoever the surveyor is for the iron pins and what they think it's going to cost for that work to be completed at a later date. That's, that's how you arrive at the figure, but you know, so already uh, done deal by you as far as giving us the number. All we're doing is approving a number that yes. I think it should be in your, in, in your hands to approve, not ours. And the only thing that I thought of when we were discussing this was the reason being um, sometimes, you know, um, they want to get their CO and this, you know, they have to apply for a bond. And if we've just had the PNZ commission meeting on the Tuesday night and this, you know, I go out and do the final inspection the following day, then we're waiting another couple of weeks before the bond can be approved, um, as was the case in December when you had um, an additional meeting for the request for Flax Mill. I've forgotten what number now, but whatever, um, on Flax Mill Hill, because they needed before the end of the year to get their bond yeah. established. Sometimes it's a time-sensitive situation, just like what you just mentioned on hydro seeding. Correct. Things yeah. like that. So yeah. I don't think we can play it any longer than we have to. Okay. Yeah, so honestly, making making us um, do sort of rubber stamp tasks uh, tends to diminish our authority. Um, if if somebody with the professional judgment, like the zoning enforcement officer, um, assembles, you know a decision, they should be able to act on it. Having them to prepare it and then come to us to rubber stamp it without us having any really evaluating um, opportunity on it just, just makes us rubber stamps. And I, I think it sort of devalues any of, anything else we do on the commission. So I'm, I'm all in favor of, of establishing that authority within um, the zoning enforcement officer. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Fred, uh, any thoughts? Fred Russo? Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with Joe, and I think uh, allowing the um, zoning enforcement officer to set the, the, the value of the bond predicated on what you said makes our commission look more efficient uh, to the well, I think it's, it's getting done. Should that be brought to the commission and just spend more time with us where our time is more valuable than you know, other matters? And also, it helps the applicant get you know further along the line without having to wait another two weeks or three weeks or one month or whatever. So I'm in favor of, of, of turning it over to the, to the DO as well. Those are good points, Fred. Thanks. Massimo, anything to add? Um, yeah, no, I, I also agree um, that, you know, I have, uh, I have full confidence in, um, in our appointed uh, zoning officer, uh, informant officer to make the proper decisions um, and, and just not, you know, um, take any more time. And, um, you know, we're, we're pretty much agreeing with, with uh, the zoning informant officer anyways, all the time. And, um, yeah, no, I'm 100% for them making that decision. And uh, I definitely believe in their professionalism that they're able to do it properly. Great. 
Thanks, Massimo. I know we don't have uh, Marcy and Sharon here, but I think you, you can see where we're leaning. But yep. We'd have to amend the regs, Harry? Yeah. yeah. Harrison, the town planner. Uh, we'll draft up a regulation amendment. Um, we're getting to the point where we really need to put a few things together to run by the commission um, anyway. So we'll work on that next couple months. Um, the only thing I'll add is that if there's something a little more complicated in terms of unit pricing and so forth, we may run by the town engineer's office to make sure we've got the current updated um, um, costs out in the real world um, and that the estimate we're getting is, you know, uh, is correct. Um, so we do that as well sometimes if it's something not typical, um, mowing and seeding and so forth, but we do check those figures every once in a while anyway as well, so. And if there's ever a dispute, I think if the applicant says, hey, yeah. you're, we're doing, whatever, bring it in front of us. So, yeah. yeah. Or if there's some question sure. that we need the commission, I think it's certainly do that too. Go ahead. Well, I, I, my, I, I, I want to sort of follow up what Harry was saying, and that was, and Harry would probably know the answer is, Harry, has there ever been an occasion where the amount of the bond was, I mean, we're approving bonds now, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. But in your opinion, should there be a, 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 a an upper limit? In other words, I'm just going to use an arbitrary number, ten thousand dollars. That the ZO, yeah. without without question, can make those calls. But if, if there's a project that's requiring, I don't know, fifty thousand dollars, is there anything there that we as commission should have some either control over or knowledge of before the final decision is made? I, I'm just putting it out there. I don't know the answer to it. Yeah, I mean, we can look into that. The other thing, maybe I'll reach out to the town council to see if they have any concerns uh, corporately as a municipality um, in what, you know, should it be a staff responsibility, a board? What a, should a cutoff be? I mean, there are cutoffs for, you know, purchasing requirements under a certain amount. You get one quote. Um, if it's a higher amount, then you need to go through more. You know, I need to go beyond myself as a right. partner and so forth. So you bring up a good point and I'll, we can explore that and we might take a temperature of some other towns and see how they do it as well through the listserv and just um, right. get idea. some feel of all that. So okay. thank you very much. So that's very helpful. We can go ahead and work on that too. Okay, anything else Harry? Um, I don't have anything else. Okay. Folks, anything else? No? Anyone else? Thank you Evan for bringing it up, okay. Anything else from anyone else? If not, then uh, someone want to make a motion to adjourn. I'll gladly make that motion, Fred Russo. Adjourn. Fred, Mosen, Fred Russo gladly makes a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Massimo second. Second by Massimo. Further discussion? All those in favor, Joe Chadwick? Chadwick is gladly in favor. <laughs> Fred, Fred Russo? In favor. Joe Vallejo? Massimo. Massimo's in favor. And chairs also in favor. So, okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.